Welcome to That Handicapping Show. I'm Claire Novak, joined today by Frank Anks. We're going to look at two races, the Coolmore Lexington at Keeneland and the Illinois Derby. The Coolmore Lexington is a wild card race for the Kentucky Derby, so the winner can earn 20 points to make the Derby field or, in the case of Pure Fun, 20 points to make the field for the Kentucky Oaks. Pure Fun is a filly in the, in the race and the rest are Colts. And then after we look at that race, we'll take a look at the Illinois Derby, which is now pretty much being considered a chance to pick up a lot of money or a Preakness prep since it's not worth any points for the Derby field. Uh, Frank, who do you like in the Coomer Lexington? Yeah, and, and this race carries points, but it, it doesn't look like uh, any obvious Derby starters in here. Is there, there aren't uh, a lot of points earned by this field previously, and right now 20 uh, is the uh, minimum to get in uh, when you look at the point standings. So uh, I didn't really uh, factor any of that uh, in this. I just kind of looked at this as a re nice race, a uh, chance to get some graded uh, graded status for your horse. So I, I just took it as that approach and some improving three-year-olds in here perhaps. Mm -hmm. uh, the horse I landed on is River Rocks, who clearly has a lot of early speed. Um, which hasn't necessarily been the best way to get to the winner's circle at this Keeneland meet, but it can be done, as we saw in the Ashland. Um, and w what backed me up even more so on this horse is I looked at some of the other speed horses, and they have tried to go faster early and typically have faded. Mm. So I suspect that a mile and a 16th, those horses are not going to be in any rush to go. Whereas River Rocks, if you look at his previous start, that was his first two-turn start, mm. He nearly lasted, and he got bumped at the start, so it was probably a little rough there, but he still got on stride, got the lead, and just got caught at the very end. And when I look at the Briss early pace numbers, it suggests that this horse went at a high rate of speed, and I don't think he needs to go that fast early Saturday. Mm -hmm. Perhaps he can, uh, you know, save a little bit more for the end and, and hold on this time. It's interesting when you look at this race, a lot of these horses for running at Keeneland on the poly track actually don't have previous poly track starts. So that kind of threw me off when I was trying to figure out who I liked in here. And one of the horses that you do have to take a look at is Pure Fun, the filly. And Kenny Meek Peak has put her in here in the hopes of picking up enough points to make the field for the Kentucky Oaks. She's definitely the class of this field. She won the Hollywood Starlet uh, back in December. And so I'm definitely, I think a lot of people will be taking a look at her and fans out at Keeneland will be as well. Kenny McPeak said he's going to bring her over in pink bandages, a pink halter, and Rosie Napravnik is riding her, and he basically said it's bring on the boys. So um, she's one that you would take a look at, and she did run on poly track. She was third in the Bermanette Oaks. Yeah, she time. finished third that day, but I think she needed that race. It had been a, a little while since she had raced, and she, obviously she won on cushion track at Hollywood Park. And she looks like, um, I mean, Ken, Kenny McPeak's having a great meet. Yeah. Uh, looks like she will be coming from behind and definitely has a chance. I have her as my second choice. Uh, she might she might go off as the favorite. It's hard to say, but uh, I, I definitely think she'll be a factor. And uh, if my horse is on the lead, I will definitely be looking to see where Pure Fun is at and if she's going to catch my pick. Kenny, of course, won the Bluegrass with Java's War and then had Frack Daddy second in the Arkansas Derby. Just a couple of other names to throw out here and take a look at. Winning Cause is two for two at Keeneland. Um, does have to stretch out, though. So a couple of times on the turf going a mile and 16th didn't go so well, but that was early on in his career. So maybe he'll stretch out uh, on Saturday and get the job done. And then this horse, uh, Eximen, or however you say his name, mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure. Just kind of an interesting horse. Ships in from Santa Anita and Tom Proctor, Garrett Gomez to ride, and seems to be uh, improving, moving up in class, and has had two pretty decent works over the surface. Definitely the April 13th work was better than his first one here. So I take a look at that horse and uh, a nice sharp five furlong workout. Yeah, ni nice at Garrett's making the trip too. He hasn't been to Keeneland uh, at all, or at least not very much at this point. Not week. a lot this So that's no. uh, encouraging uh, if you like that horse. Uh, Saro has been a horse that's been well regarded uh, throughout. Um, probably went too fast early in the Fountain of Youth and 
paid a price, but he certainly could bounce back with a top effort here as well. Mm -hmm. and that's one that Barry Irwin said could possibly go to the Preakness from this race, although the Kentucky Derby still might be on their radar depending on how he runs. But let's remember it hasn't been since 1999 when Charismatic won this race and then won the Derby that you've had a horse succeed. And recently they've done actually pretty poorly and you've had some off the board finishes from horses winning this race and then going there. Uh, let's move quickly to the Illinois Derby. Pletcher, Todd Pletcher has a record four wins in this race and one of his horses, Abraham, is going going to be among my top picks. The other two that I like in here are Departing for Al Stahl and Siete de Oros, who I liked earlier in the year, who ran second to buy Jack by a head in the Jerome. This was a horse that appeared to be pretty good and then tailed off a little bit in the ensuing preps, but didn't really run that disgracefully. Mm -hmm. He's had a break. Um, he came back this race uh, after, what was the last one that he missed? The Gotham. He was fourth at the Gotham and then he got a break. He didn't go to the wood. So he's coming back in here and I really do think that this horse is one of the classiest horses in the field. So I'm going to look at Departing coming out of the Louisiana Derby where he was third. Siete de Oros coming off a of fourth in the Gotham. And then Abraham who is lightly raced and ran in the Sunland Derby. Mm -hmm. I landed on Fort Dubai in this race. Uh, it's a horse that will be making its fifth start. Um, it's kind of it's shown steady improvement. It's a Jim Taffel homebred. Mm -hmm. I'm familiar with a half to this horse named uh, Fast Alex, who was an Fleet Alex horse that was very talented. Mm. Uh, won a great won at stakes. Was uh, great at stakes placed, and was a horse that was always coming from the clouds. So that's a difficult. Uh, running style in U.S. racing. Uh, this horse appears to have a little bit more early speed. So I, I think they probably got what they wanted out of this horse in terms of, you know, the breeding. And, and now they have that early speed uh, solved and the mayor's kind of proven herself already. Mm -hmm. And I, I think this horse can improve again, which definitely puts it right there uh, capable of winning. I kind of, it's kind of interesting that they cut back the six furlongs after you know running second at, at two turns at Hawthorne, they cut back to six furlongs and pick up that win. Mm. Um, and just thing, things seem to be going in the right direction. And I don't think this horse is going to be one of the favorites, so the price should be about right. Mm -hmm. uh, the parting definitely looks formidable. I'm a little concerned about that outside post. Yeah, post 13. Uh, I think that's going to be a little tough for a young horse like this. Uh, but definitely going in the right direction. Uh, has had, had a bullet work at Churchill. This horse is peaking at the right time, yeah. and and maybe I'll look silly to to even go against it because uh, when a horse is coming together like this, they're definitely dangerous. But uh, I'll go for the upset here for Dubai, and I'll definitely uh, horizontal and vertical wagers departing will be on my tickets. All righty. Well, we wish you guys the best of luck, and we thank Briss as always for the PPs. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next time.